السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear little children, today is the night of Safar 26, 1000, 26th of Safar, 1442 years after the Hijrah of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu which coincides with October 13, 2020. I welcome you back to our Prophets and Messengers series and today inshallah we are going to talk about the dream of Prophet Ibrahim where he was instructed to slaughter his son. As we have been talking about the life of the great Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, you have by now understood that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him with very very severe tests and of one of the most severe tests was the story of his dream that we are inshallah going to talk about today. Allah mentions this story specifically in Surah al safat and this happened after, of course, uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him with his people and his people, as you remember, threw him into the fire and uh, he was saved from the fire and when he left the people and a lot of things has happened in his life. He had Hajar, huh? he married Hajar. Then he had to migrate them all the way to Mecca, leave them in a place there was no people, nothing, an empty desert. And Ismail salam, grew up, as you have heard, in that land. Little bit going back in the story, this happened when Prophet Ismail salam, of course Ismail, the son Ismail, was at an, at an age that he could uh, participate in things with his father. Maybe 10, 9, 10, 8. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't mention what that age is. Let me read what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah al Safar. Allah ta'ala says about Prophet Ibrahim, وَقَالَ إِنِّي ذَاهِبٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ And Ibrahim said, after Allah ta'ala rescued him from the fire, Verily, I'm going to my Lord, He will guide me. رَبِّ هَبِلِي مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ he made a special dua, my Lord, give me from the righteous, meaning give me offspring from the righteous. He just didn't want children. He wanted righteous children. Because if a child is not obedient to Allah, it will really hurt the parents. So it is not to have children only, but to have righteous children. So Allah Ta'ala answers, فَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِغُلَامٍ حَلِيمٍ So we have gave him the glad tidings of a forbearing boy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this place doesn't mention uh, the name of Ismail. Amazing. Allah says, Ghulam in Halim. A young child who was Halim. And this is a certificate from Allah for this child. Of course this is Ismail. Of course this is Ismail. But here Allah ta'ala doesn't mention his name. Then Allah ta'ala says, Falamma balagha ma'ahu sa'iya. When he was old enough to be with him, to walk with him, to do things with him. He said, Oh my son, inni arafil manami anni Indeed, I saw in my dream that I'm slaughtering you. Fandur madha tara. So tell me what you think. This is just not a dream. This is a real dream. And in the dream, Allah Ta'ala is telling Prophet Ibrahim, you have to slaughter your son. But Prophet Ibrahim doesn't jump into doing it. Of course, he wants to do, has to do it, he knows. But he wants to prepare his son. So he asks his son. And look at the answer of the son. Kuala ya abati. He said, oh my father, if alma tu'mar. Do what Allah has commanded you. Do, do what, what you have been commanded. Satajiduni insha'allahu minas sabirin. You will find me patient by the permission of Allah. And that shows why Allah Ta'ala has described him as Halim, forbearing. He was very patient with the decree of Allah. It's very difficult to understand why would Allah want my father who is a prophet 
to slaughter me for no reason. He understood that Allah is the Lord. If he tells, you have to do it. Falamma aslama, so Allah Ta'ala says, when both, of, when both of them submitted, meaning submitted to the command of Allah, وَتَلَّهُ jabin, And Ibrahim put Ismail upon his forehead, upside down. Okay? وَنَادَيْنَاهُ أَيَّا Ibrahim, And we called out to Ibrahim, O Ibrahim, قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا You have fulfilled your vision. You have fulfilled your promise. You really don't have to slaughter him. Inna kadalika najizil muhsinin. Indeed, we reward those who are muhsin. Those who do good things as if they see Allah. Very sincerely. So Prophet Ibrahim, in this story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them as patient. Aslama, Muslim, a true Muslim, a true patient person. And also a muhsin. This is a high level of uh, 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 station that you can reach. You worship Allah as if you see Him. Meaning, He is watching you and you see Him. This is exactly how you pray. So you are absolutely focused in your prayer. You are absolutely devoted in what you want to do. Then Allah Ta'ala says, Inna hadha lahu al bala ul mubin. Verily, this was a manifest trial. It was a very difficult trial. وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبِحٍ عَظِيمٍ And we have ransomed him with a great sacrifice. What is this sacrifice? It was a ram. As we know from the authentic hadith, inshallah it's coming. وَتَرَقْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخِرِينَ And we left this story of Ibrahim, the remembrance of Ibrahim, amongst the generations to come. Look, Allah mentions this story in the Quran with his words. So when we recite this story, for every single letter we get 10 rewards. Huge honor for Ibrahim and his family. Salamun ala Ibrahim. Peace be upon Ibrahim. Kadalika najazil muhsinin. Thus indeed we reward the, those who do ihsan, those who are muhsin, meaning those who do their good deeds in such an amazing and perfect way. They do it as if they see Allah. Innahu min ibadina al-mu'mineen. Verily, he was one of our believing slaves. So in this story, Allah mentioned, Allah described Prophet Ibrahim as a Muslim, as a mu'min, as a muhsin, as a, as from those who are sabirin, patient. Patient. وَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِإِسْحَاقَ نَبِيَّ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Huh? Uh, and we gave him glad tidings with Ishaq, messenger, a prophet from the righteous. Now look at the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the story. Allah says he went through such a difficult time. Then he asked me, give me righteous son. So I gave him Ismail, a son. Not, he didn't mention the name, a son. And his son, this has happened with him and his son. Then, as a gift for his being so devoted to Allah, then Allah Ta'ala gave him another glad tidings. Give him another son, Ishaq. So who is the first son that he mentioned in the story of the slaughtering? Of course it is the other son, Ismail, because Prophet Ibrahim had two sons, Ismail and Ishaq. So the first story is the story of Ismail. But Allah Ta'ala does not here specifically mention the name. This is from the great wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to figure out. And our ulama of tafsir, those who explain the Quran of the past and present, majority of them they say that it is Ismail, it is not Ishaq. As we will talk about the fake story that is there with regards to the slaughtering of Sayyidina Ismail alayhi We have one authentic hadith about this story of the slaughtering, which is mentioned in a very short passage. Is this hadith is reported by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad and has been authenticated by Imam Al Albani and other scholars, reported by Abdullah ibn Abbas. Abdullah ibn Abbas mentioned the long hadith which is talking about how Prophet Ibrahim was taught Hajj. And in between, he mentioned uh, when Prophet Ibrahim he put Ismail on his forehead. 
wa ala Ismail qamisun abiyad and upon Ismail Ismail was wearing a white shirt so see the narration very clearly mentions is Ismail wa qala ya abati innahu laysa li thawbun tukaffinuni fihi ghayru he said oh my father i don't have any other dress i don't have any other dress with which you can shroud me because he knows that his father is going to slaughter him he's going to die but he's so careful to even follow the command of allah in that state so let me take it he, he was going to take it off so that prophet ibrahim could shroud his son with this white dress when he was about to do it min khalfi he was called from behind ayya ibrahim qad saddaqta ru'ya o ibrahim you have fulfilled your vision faltafata ibrahim ibrahim looked back fa idha huwa bi kabshin abyada aqrana a'yan so he saw a ram white ram with two horns and black eyes qala ibn abbas ibn abbas said laqad ra'aytuna natba'u dhalika ad-darba min al-kibash he said you would see as we always used to go and try to find this kind of sheep to slaughter white horn with black eye and the prophet sallam, our prophet muhammad sallam, also we have the narration authentic narration that when he used to slaughter his ram would be white and had but horns and its face would be black its eyes would be black its belly here would be black and its legs uh, legs the four legs would be also black but the the sheep would be white in color this is the sheep that he used to like to slaughter also when the prophet sallam, opened the makkah fatih makkah when he went there the hadith is in abu daud and others uh, the prophet sallam, asked one of the sahabi called uthman ibn abi talha the hadith is authentic he said that the, the person told him that i forgot to tell you to cover the horns of the ram in the kaaba because i do not want anything to be there that will uh, uh, you know take away the uh, attention of the people when they are going to pray in the kaaba what are those two horns of the ram those two horns of the ram in the time of the prophet sallam, where the horns of the ram which Sayyidina Ibrahim salam, slaughtered for uh, on, on behalf of Ismail salam. so they kept this horn until one generation next generation it used to be hanging in the Kaaba in the time of the Prophet salam, and one of the uh, scholar Imam Sufyan Thawri he mentions that when the Kaaba was burnt most likely this was in the time of Abdullah ibn Zubair anhu, then the horns of that ram was also burnt with the Kaaba okay otherwise we would be most likely be able to see that horns of the ram uh, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin but it doesn't exist anymore before i finish this story there are some false information there first of all there are some people who say that when prophet ibrahim was going to slaughter him the knife was so sharp that if he hit the stone the stone will break apart but when he was trying to do that to his son it was not cutting nothing like this has been reported from the prophet Sassam. also they say that the angels were all lamenting and crying oh allah what's happening a father is slaughtering the son and this is going to be really terrible nothing like this happened all fake information also it's uh, it says that prophet ismail told his father that oh my father don't put me like this like the way you put an animal put me upside down because if you put me like this and i look at you while you are slaughtering me and then you will feel bad and you will not slaughter me none of this has happened none of this is reported with any authentic chain of narration also some people they claim that the animal which prophet ibrahim was given to slaughter this was sent down from the sky from the paradise nothing like this has been reported from the prophet sallam, or in the quran all of this is fake information but the most very popular fake information that is there is a lot of people they believe that the son who prophet ibrahim was supposed to slaughter was not Ismail, it was Ishaq. This story is of course, this story is of course false, not correct. The son, the Prophet, Prophet Ibrahim was supposed to slaughter was Ismail as we have mentioned to you in the Quran and the way the Quran mentions the story, Allah Ta'ala mentions the story is very clear that it is talking about 
the first son of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, which is Ismail sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. What does this story teach us? This story teaches us to be obedient to Allah. Somebody would say that, you know, we are not prophet, we are not ordered to slaughter our son. So how do we benefit from this story? You can benefit from this story so many ways. A lot of children, when their parents tell them to pray five times a day, they throw a temper tantrum. They say, oh, I don't have time, it's too much. But when you listen to this story, I usually ask the children, which is more difficult? To slaughter your son or to pray five times a day? And uh, everybody says, five, pray five times a day. That's how these stories help us. A lot of girls, when their parents tell them to wear hijab when they're growing up, when they're grown up, you know, cover the, with the scarf and the long jilbab and the Islamic dress code of the men and the women, they throw them tantrum. They say, most of the people, the girls don't do it. How come I have to cover and it's so hot? I usually ask them, which is more easy? To slaughter your son or to wear hijab? They say, wear hijab. This is how we benefit from these stories. These stories gives us strength. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. One of the purpose of the stories of the Prophet for our Prophet sallallahu One of the reasons Allah ta'ala told these stories to our Prophet sallallahu alayhi bihi fu'adak. So that his heart will be strengthened. So when we are weak, when we are feeling tired, and we don't want to read Quran, we don't want to do much, these stories come and say, okay, our prophets did all this. Why can't we do extra prayer? Why don't, cannot we establish five times prayer? Why cannot we go to the masjid? Why cannot we fast in the month of Ramadan? Why cannot we memorize more Quran? Why cannot we recite more Quran? And inshallah ta'ala will be able to defeat the shaitan and be upon Sirat al-Mustaqim alladheena an'amta alayhim the path of those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with which is why we are studying the stories of the prophets and the messengers so that we can understand what the path was. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.